All right, I'm going to try and make a quick, relatively quick video here just to detail what's going on here with the Miller welder um, for the guys on the welding web who are trying to help me out to get it to weld aluminum properly. Um, as we know, it's a Miller Econo TIG from the 90s. I replaced the master on off switch, corrected some wires in there, brand new uh, connector and hose because the other one melted inside. Um, and we have DC negative working, no problem. Uh, it's not a scratch start setup. Um, I have a foot pedal. And basically it just does not do what I think it should be doing in AC mode, high frequency. As some people said, it should sound different. The machine should make a different noise. Um, it's not doing that. Uh, the purpose also for this video is just in case anyone has any recommendations about a cart or something. Here's where I'm keeping the welders on the side of the drill press. The Lindy is on wheels. I'm not changing that. The bottle's mounted to the back of it. Um, this, I do want a low profile, flat type cart for it. Um, that will live somewhat right underneath here, underneath the shelf with all the metal and uh, different stuff that I need to keep on hand for working over in this little area. I will need an extension cord to get me from here over to the other side of the garage. Because um, when I'm building an exhaust in here for the red car, for the Camaro, in the winter time, um, I don't think my 25 foot hose will be long enough if I have to do TIG welding underneath. Luckily that's probably going to be mostly steel but I still want this welder to weld aluminum. Um, that's kind of a goal I have. I am using straight argon. I am almost out. Um, I have enough for a little bit, but it's straight argon. I have piles of scrap aluminum. It's from work, but I do not know what uh, actual type of aluminum it is. Um, I'm using proper rods. Aluminum rods, I haven't tried stainless yet, and then uh, mild steel rods. Um, but here we go, I'm gonna try and set this up and get things going. I ground a little piece of steel. It is a total, oh man, I can't do this one handed. Two stacked on top of each other are 0.1425. And I'm using 332nd rod with a nice pointed tip on there that I grinded lengthwise this way, not circly around. Um, again, steel I really have no problem with. It's the aluminum. Um, when I get to aluminum, I'll explain a little bit more, but I'm gonna try and just set up the phone camera, turn on the welder, and just do a couple things here, just in case you guys hear or see anything that looks weird with the machine or what's coming out of it. But it shouldn't be because DC has always been okay for me. Sorry if the camera angle's not great. That's the best I can do for today without a helper. DC negative. A little bit more juice. Now I know I should clean this. I know I should be cleaning this right now because I just dipped real quick. Um, I haven't had the machine going in a couple days so I had some adjustments that moved around.
So I'm not here trying to make any decorative welds or anything. Simply just showing that the machine is doing what it should do in DC negative. I'm standing up, I'm not sitting down, things are not happy. But the machine is... Sorry about the view. The machine is doing just fine. I only clean this a little bit, just quick stuff, but the machine is doing that. Obviously not using DC positive. Turn off the machine. Now, I will switch to my brand new, totally unused, Tungsten, it's a blue, 2% lanthanated. Um, from what I've read, you're not supposed to sharpen it. If anything, for when welding aluminum, you should strike it above a piece of dissimilar metal, like a penny. Um, so I will do that. And even though I wiped it down once before with acetone, we will do it again. The aluminum that I have prepped is here again I don't know what kind it is scotch bright pad like we said lengthways cleaning it this is a brand new scotch bright pad okay so that's clean in the collet Little bit of stick out. Sorry if you can't really see what I'm doing here. Next time I'll have a camera helper. I use an aluminum only brush as well as an aluminum only grinding pad just to prep the aluminum. So we're just going to throw this in here, I believe this is, we'll measure it, come on, clamp on, so it'll probably be in my way, but Again, this is just to show what the welder is doing, not what I'm capable of. This is... Zero it out. Point oh seven. Or point seven, my fault. No, point oh seven of an inch which is 1.78 millimeters. We'll even wipe it down. It's already been hit with that clean wheel and the wire brush. Okay, we got that changed. I'll have a filler rod ready, but I really don't think I'll even be able to Get it to go. We're going to AC high, which is this setting on the machine here. It's not in a scratch start mode. Turn it on, bring that down a little bit. All right, if you guys notice if the noise is different, something is totally whacked please feel free to point it out we gotta hit our penny first ok 
okay. That little ball there. So that was a good couple seconds. And all it did was that. I'm going straight up. I could probably ball the electrode a little more, but I don't think that's it. Post quote. We'll give it more. We'll just crank it all the way. So the spark I can see is coming off the side. It's hard for me to even videotape with one hand, let alone try and add filler rod, but I do see that the spark, or the flame front, whatever you want to call it, is coming off one side, so maybe that's an electrode issue, but I just don't know why it's only doing that. I can't get a puddle. Um, it's coming out black and dirty, despite me having scuff this thing not only with the wire wheel and acetone but with an actual grinding pad my settings seem good I usually like it down there for something that small but and the gas flow is is on so I'm just confused um, some of the guys on the board mentioned something that I will be trying buying some 6061 aluminum known good aluminum today I of course cleaned the tungsten with scotch bright and acetone and I think I'm seeing the high frequency jump but I really don't know what I'm looking for because I've never welded aluminum before anyway that's going to close this video out I don't know maybe maybe one day we'll get this going and if it's me not doing something right i'd love to fix it but if it's the machine that just is not working right in high frequency or not staying in high frequency mode um, i'd love to get that repaired all right that's about it see ya